Hello everyone and let's check out another exciting chess game by Paul Morphy. And in this chess game, Paul Morphy has the white pieces and his opponent is James Thompson. Another exciting chess game of Paul Morphy from 1859. And as you can see in the chessboard, there is no Queen's Knight of Morphy, a knight handicap game. Morphy played a knight odds game. A knight odds match against James Thompson. He won five of them when he didn't have his knight against Thompson. And Thompson has managed to win three games and Morphy won the match. Even when he didn't have his knight, Thompson was one of the strongest players in the United States in that era. So Paul Morphy starts the game with playing f4. An interesting opening. He usually plays e4. But when he is playing with the knight odds, he played f4, d5, e3, knight to f6, knight to f3, bishop to g4, bishop to e2, c5, Morphy castled. As you can see, Morphy is playing with his creativity, not playing his famous Italian opening, the king's gambit, or anything else. Knight to c6, b3, e6. Bishop to b2, bishop to e7, h3. Exchanging the pieces, exchanging the bishop for the knight. d4, queen to e1, queen to b6, rook to b1, lining the rook with the queen, and knight to b4. Morphy played queen to e2, and rook to d8 by Thompson, a3, and going back. Well, James Thompson didn't want to capture the pawn because if knight takes on c2, we have queen to d3, and Thompson didn't want this. After a3, he is retreating his knight, knight from b to d5, king to h1, d takes on e3, capturing back, h5, by Thompson, attacking, not castling, maybe, c4, defending the knight, and b4 by Morphy. Morphy was to sacrifice his pawn for opening the file, for attacking opportunities. And Thompson accepted the challenge, and bishop takes on b4, but then bishop to d4, attacking the queen. And this bishop is a monster bishop, defending the queen, and the bishop at the same time is not very easy. And also, as you can see, Morphy's bishops the two bishops of Paul Morphy is aiming the pawns. So Thompson thought that when he was up a piece, he could sacrifice the exchange, giving up the rook, and getting rid of this monster bishop. E takes on d4, and a5 by Thompson. Now he has a solid bishop and pawn chain, as you can see. c5, queen to a7, queen to e5, knight from c to d5. And Morphy captured the knight. Bishop takes on d5. Capturing back. And capturing the pawn. Queen takes on g7. Attacking the rook. Defending. Morphy wants to open the file. f5. And queen to a6. Queen to e5. Lining the queen with the king. The king's safety has been compromised for Thompson. He haven't castled his king, as you can see. f6 by Thompson. Of course, Morphy didn't capture the pawn, because if capturing the pawn, then exchanging the queens. Morphy didn't want to exchange the queens. He wants to keep his queen. He wants to keep the queens in the chessboard for creating more complications for Thompson. So queen to g3 by Morphy, queen to c6, and Morphy captured the pawn. F takes on e6, knight to e7 by Thompson. Let's take it back. Why not capturing the pawn? Of course. That's a very simple question. Thompson played knight to e7, going back. But let's take it back. If capturing the pawn with the queen, then rook to e1. And if bishop captures the rook, then rook captures the bishop. And still attacking the queen, the queen is pinned. And black is losing. White is much better. Black is losing this chess game. So let's get back to the real game.
After f takes on e6, we have knight to e7, but this f-pawn, this pass f-pawn is going to cause a huge headache for Thompson and will ruin his day. After knight to e7, Morphy played queen to b8. This is check. Queen to c8, blocking, and queen to d6. But Thompson is insisting on exchanging the queens. Queen to c6 by James Thompson. And what would you do in this position? This is the most interesting and the most amazing moment of this chess game. Can you guess the killer move of Morphy? What would you do? Can you guess the crushing, the smashing move of Paul Morphy? When Morphy was playing with the Knighthoods, he played Rook takes on B4. What a move. Sacrificing the exchange. And what was the purpose of this move? Well, Morphy wants to open the A-file and then attack the king with his second rook, his remaining rook. Thompson captured the rook. What else? And then rook to A1 by Paul Morphy. As you can see, the A-file, the open A-file is looking dangerous for Thompson. So after rook to a1, Thompson played knight to c8, blocking with the knight. If a random move, let's say h4, what happens then? Then rook to a8, that's check, and how to defend? Of course with the knight, but then d5, and there is no defense. If defending the queen, then rook takes knight, check, mate. So in this position, black can't play queen to d5, as you can see. So queen takes on d6, capturing back, and threatening checkmate. King to d8. After king to d8, e7, forking the king, and the rook. And as you can see, black is losing, and there is no defense. Let's get back to the real game. So this is why Thompson played knight to c8, blocking the rook. Rook to a8. The knight is pinned. Thompson played b3, and I find this position very interesting, because Thompson has only two moves left for promoting the queen. But in this position, Paul Morphy played the move, and Thompson resigned. What would you do once again? Well, Paul Morphy pushed the pawn, d5, and Thompson resigned after d5. Because there is no defense. What a game. When Morphy was playing the most accurate moves constantly, it doesn't matter if he is playing with the knighthoods. Sooner or later, he is going to defeat his opponent when his opponent was playing like a human. And what a game. I just randomly picked this chess game from the database. And look what I found. Look at this. Look at this chess game. Almost all of the chess games of Paul Morphy is full of brilliancies. He was a genius, obviously. He was an international master, or even a grandmaster level strength player who was stuck in the 1850s. So this is why Morphy usually played with the knighthoods, or even with the rookhoods, against his opponents, against his weaker opponents. And let me show you the possible continuation. If pushing the pawn, there is only one move left for promoting the queen. Then d takes on c6, capturing the queen, promoting the queen, king to h2, and what now? How to defend the double checkmate threat? Queen to d7, check, mate. Or rook takes knight, check, mate. There is one defense, actually. Can you see that defense? And that move is queen to h1. It was just a joke, of course. There is no defense. For only prolonging the game, king takes on h1. And then a random move, and rook takes on c8. Check, mate. After d5, if capturing the queen, if queen takes on d6, then capturing back, and again, threatening checkmate. So black can't push the pawn, but there is no defense, so let's randomly push this pawn, and then rook takes on c8, 
Checkmate. Once again, Black is getting checkmated. Another beautiful chess game by Paul Morphy. A masterpiece. When he was playing with the knight handicap, it was a huge disadvantage for Paul Morphy. But again, he used to play the most accurate moves. So defeating his opponent for Paul Morphy when he was playing with the knighthoods is no problem. So this is why after d5 by Morphy, Thompson resigned. And thank you for watching. And I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye bye.